Google Ads Performance Planner is a free tool that will look at your daily spend and then assess if specific campaign changes will affect key metrics like conversions, CPA, clicks, and more. You can then compare a few different types of forecasts to see if you want to implement those changes to reach specific campaign goals. We'll go over the benefits of Performance Planner, how it exactly works, and then we'll walk through a few examples so you get a better understanding of how the tool actually looks within Google Ads. Before we hop into Google Ads, I want to talk about why you may want to consider using Performance Planner. And then I also want to go over how it works. So first, sticking with benefits, with Performance Planner, you can get monthly and quarterly projections for eligible campaigns. So this is beneficial. We get clients asking us for projections for Google Ads all the time. And while we always take a projection with a grain of salt, because there's a lot of factors that could change that projection, this still gives us a good baseline. And as you can see, I stress eligible. When we actually hop into the tool in Google Ads, I'll show you the requirements needed so a campaign can be allowed to use in Performance Planner. Next, you will get suggestions that you may want to consider to improve the performance of those campaigns. I already did a video on Google's recommendations, and you can check that one out here, and it's kind of similar. It's always good to review the suggestions that Google offers. It doesn't mean that you have to implement every single one of those suggestions. And then one of the cooler features is that you can see how your spend and performance could potentially change if you update certain settings within your campaign. So now, how does Performance Planner work? Think about all the different search queries that are done on Google every single day. They have billions to consider and everything in their database they say is updated about every 24 hours. So Performance Planner is going to look at relevant ad auctions over the last 7 to 10 days along with the historical information of all the search queries that they have. The tool is going to take into consideration certain things like seasonality, historical landing page performance, maybe you have certain competitors that show up more within your auction insights on certain months or certain times of the year and less during others. After a few simulations are run, Performance Planner is going to collect some data. Performance Planner can look at what they projected versus the actual performance. And then they're going to use machine learning to kind of fill in the gap to better tune your forecast over time. And when we're looking at conversion performance, that is going to be taken from the conversion column within the Google Ads reports. And it also ties in to how you have your campaign set up. Are you using just an overall account-wide conversion action, or are you using campaign-level conversions? If you are getting a little bit more specific and using campaign-level conversions, then for each campaign you select within Performance Planner, it's only going to use the conversions that you have assigned for each particular campaign. Now we have that out of the way, let's go into Google Ads and look at one example of how you can use Performance Planner. I'm already in the Performance Planner in a particular account, but no matter where you are in Google Ads, it can easily be found by going up to your Tools and Settings, and then it's already highlighted the first one under Planning. Yep, we're already there. This account has never run a forecast with Performance Planner before, so I have nothing else here. So the only option I have is to create a new plan. You see right in the middle of the screen, you can click on this Create New Plan box. But after you already have a forecast within the account, you can go up to the blue plus button, and then we can start creating some new plans. Sorry, I have to blur out some of the campaigns. This is an actual client account, but there's a few things within this view that I want to talk about. So I'm glad I chose this account. While I have all the campaign names blurred out, you can see the check boxes next to them off to the left. So yes, you can click on multiple campaigns and group them together within the same forecast. But as you see in the text up here where my mouse is moving, Google's telling you for the best results, make sure that you're using campaigns with similar goals. That goes exactly back to the How Performance Planner Works slide I talked about closer to the intro, that it's going to use whatever conversions you have set up for the main conversions column. This particular account is easy. It's set at the account level, and they're all pretty much the same in terms of the goals of the campaigns. So I can click on all these eligible campaigns and group them together. So consider that if you are using campaign level conversions, I would create a different forecast for each of the different conversion groupings for your campaigns. Another thing you might notice in this gray bar right here is that nine campaigns aren't eligible to forecast. And how is this possible? Well, to better explain this, I'm gonna jump into the help section about Performance Planner. There are specific requirements for each campaign type available in Google Ads to see if a campaign is eligible to use Performance Planner. Just looking at the first option for search campaigns, I'm not going to read every single one of these bullet points because I'm sharing the link on the screen right now where you can find these requirements. But depending on the campaign type, there's usually some set minimums that the campaign needs to reach. Whether it needs to be running for at least a couple days, it needs to have a certain amount of impressions in the past week, it needs to have a certain amount of clicks within the past week, those sort of things. You can see for display, you can't change your bids within the last seven days. App campaigns, it goes up to 10 days, and so on and so on. 
So feel free to use the link to review the campaign eligibilities before using Performance Planner. It could save you some time. Or if you're just wondering why your campaign is not showing up in Performance Planner, odds are the answer is going to be on this page. And then if you look at the very bottom section for ineligible campaigns, anything that you have deleted or you made changes, anything that's in a draft campaign or an experiment, those aren't going to be eligible. So let's go back into Google Ads and I'm just going to pick a few campaigns that do meet the requirements. Just to make it easy, I'm going to stick with search campaigns and then pick just these three. Very similar in terms of the keywords that we're targeting, fairly close in spend within the past 90 days. Definitely have the same conversion actions being tracked. They're just focused on different industries. So I chose those campaigns. Now I'm gonna click continue. First, you can choose the date range that you'd like to see the results for. I'm recording this at the very beginning of June of 2022. And Google by default is giving me the next three full months. It's giving me a custom option to select my own date range. You can choose the next week. There it is. I can choose the next month or I can choose the next quarter, which if you notice is the same as the custom option that they gave me. After you've chosen the forecast period, you will need to select the forecast metric. This account is pure lead gen. We have different ways that we assess the value of it. We don't import it back into Google ads. We also don't have app installs and there's a few other ones, but the main one I'm going to want to see is conversions. And then you can choose if you want to add a target. As you can see, the target portion of the plan is optional. So the default option is no target, but since I'm looking at metrics, I want to look at a particular conversion metric. And already it's helping me come up with an ideal target number. Looking at the previous three months, those campaigns I selected had 60 conversions. The same time last year, they only had 13. So we've already seen some improvement, but I want a little more. I'm not going to get too aggressive. Let's just bump it up to 80 and then we'll see how that plays into the forecast. Now let's go and create the plan. And here's what we initially see. First, I can name my plan. I'm going to just leave it as is, but if it's something I want to save and review later, it'll be back in that main screen when we first went into Performance Planner. Here, if I go to Campaigns, it has the few that I selected. I believe there were three total. Yep. If I click on the pencil button, it's going to take me back to that screen so I can edit my campaigns, choose different ones, remove a few, add a few different ones, whatever. I'm going to leave it as is. I can change the date range and I can change the key metric and target. First dropping down below, we see we can explore the forecast. This forecast is looking at my average conversion rate and I believe on the previous screen it was saying it was looking at the past seven day conversion rate. Now I know I said my target was 80 conversions and it's kind of showing it right down here. That's where these two dots are meeting. So looking at my existing settings, you can see it's the gray dot. You're spending about 5.4K to get 37 conversions for an average CPA of almost 146 bucks. Now the blue line, their plan settings, spend is a little bit higher, but it's saying it can get a 79 conversions, very close to my 80 target for an average CPA of 68.46. And then I can click on the chart to update the spend. If I go up here, it's saying the conversion rates are based on a forecasted conversion rate. And there it is the last seven days of conversion rate data. We can go down to historical conversion rate and there you can choose a particular custom date range that you would wanna look at for that forecast. You can create a custom conversion rate. Maybe you know you're making landing page improvements and say, if I can get my conversion rate up to 6%, apply that one and there we see how that forecast would work. Could be helpful if you are doing any CRO or landing page testing. I'm just gonna reset it back to the original one and then we see a scaled conversion rate. And that scaled conversion rate is going to look at all campaigns, not just the ones that we have selected. If we go back over, the blue line is the planned settings. The gray dotted line is going to maintain my target. But it's kind of showing me as I spend more and that spend number goes up, it's showing me what it would take to get these certain amount of conversions. Let's go all the way to the top. Let's get crazy. Yeah, it's a notably higher spend if I want to hit 500 conversions. And this account doesn't have that budget. But if you get that unrealistic client request of how can we don't have this many conversions, you can potentially go back and say, well, this is what it's going to have to take. You're going to have to find more budget or you need to work on your website or your landing pages to improve the conversion rate to make it easier to hit that goal. If I go over to the other tab of compare performance, we get to look at the graphs in a different way. Now, while the date range looks the same here, we can see that it is last year. So it's showing us past performance. If I hover over a different one, we can see the existing settings forecasting. So year over year, it's looking a lot better. But there we see the difference between the existing settings and the plan settings. So the blue plan settings is again, if you implement the suggested changes for the plan. If I scroll down here, they already give us a few metrics, spend, conversions. Remember, this is the target stuff I want to hit, but you can add a little bit more to the forecast. I want to look at clicks, CPC. Again, most of the stuff doesn't apply to the campaigns. 
got to go down and hit OK. And there we get a little bit more information if the client or your boss does request it. So let me go down to the actual campaign suggestion. So in this particular plan, Google's recommending that I pause the bottom two campaigns and give all the budget to this top one here. Assuming my average conversion rate stays the same as the past seven days, the CPA for this particular campaign will increase, but the overall with the three combined will get me closer to what I need to hit the 80 goals. While that would get me there, this second one I have here is extremely important to the client. And this is where you have to take some of these forecasts and the recommendations with a grain of salt. Because what we have set up as a conversion in this account is a higher funnel lead form. Lead form that is on the client's website, not a lead form extension. And even though the CPA for this middle campaign is much higher than most of the other campaigns in the account, when we look internally, we see leads that come from this account with a very high CPA have by far the highest close rate. They are the most valuable lead. While we get more conversions from here, and I'm talking about the top row, it's about 50-50. So yes, we're growing our overall conversions, and that will lead to more closed conversions. However, it's not necessarily all the conversions that we want. Let me go into a different account to see what other types of recommendations we may have. Here's another account I pulled up. This one, I just picked a few display campaigns. Their display campaigns convert fairly well. I added in a target of 500. I had one ineligible because it did have two little conversions for this particular forecast. But here we see the suggested changes. To hit the forecast that I wanted to, it's actually telling me to decrease my bids and increase my budget. That is because I have a lower conversion rate and I'm being pretty aggressive with my conversions. So lowering the CPC bids would help. Yes, this one is using manual, but it's also telling me from a budget standpoint what I would need for these campaigns. This one below is remarketing, so I don't have a ton of room to grow unless I'm really driving a lot of traffic via other means. That's gonna have an impact on it, how much traffic I'm getting. So there's not much I can do there from the budget standpoint, but they are telling me to lower my bids. This one is peer display. Definitely have much more room to grow, more room to expand my reach. Still telling me to lower my bids, but I do have to increase my budget if my conversion rate does not improve. So you can see there's a lot of things that you can play around here. Look at adjusting your budgets, look at adjusting the conversion rate. Maybe you need to adjust your campaigns and play around to see what it would take to hit the goals that you're looking to achieve. We can look at downloading the information if you wanna share it with somebody else. But I'm gonna hop back over here and go back into the performance planner main view. As you see, there was no save button. Think of it as like anything on Google Drive, Sheets or Docs. As you're making updates to your forecast, it's gonna automatically save for you. So I could click on this box, delete the plan if I want to, look at some of the sharing stats, if we go back in it, and then you can make a few adjustments to change anything that you want to make. One thing I realized I did forget to go through was actually clicking on one of the campaigns. I can't believe I missed that. It's kind of a big deal. So here you can get an individual forecast for each of the campaign. If I want to play around with the spend, I can adjust that number. There we see the year over year conversion rate, the previous period of conversion rate. Again, it's based off of that forecast run. So it's going to give me an estimated forecast rate, but again, I can change it if I want to. And then it's showing me some campaign changes. It was hard for me to show some examples because every account's going to be different and the recommendations are going to be different. Google says on depending what campaign type the campaign is, you may see different recommendations, more than just spends and bids. From the search, you could get something like add particular keywords, add the search partners, those types of things. But there's a lot of information that you can use. I know it could be easy just to pass this off, especially since we saw recommendations where, of, yeah, you need to increase your budget. That's fine. But as we can see how much the conversion rate impacts those decisions, the onus isn't always on Google. If your campaigns or your website has a pretty low conversion rate, that's on the brand or the advertiser to work to try to fix that. Then run those forecasts again, compare those plans, which you can see we can do, and then a lot of those times you won't need to raise your budgets or raise your bids. See what it's gonna take to have you reach that goal. Again, use this as some sort of baseline to visualize what performance could be using recent historical information. If you have any other questions about Performance Planner, I'll try to answer them as best as possible. It's a little bit tough with this one because each account and each campaign is gonna be unique. It's hard to say without seeing the information, but we'll do the best we can to answer those questions within the comments. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you wanna see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.